Okay, so really all this color is, it's a fan on top of a heat sink. So this is what's gonna keep our CPU cool. Importantly, down the bottom of the CPU cooler, we've got thermal paste pre-applied. So we're not gonna have to add any additional thermal paste, but we need to be really careful we don't damage the pre-applied thermal paste. So don't be touching this at all or letting it rub off on anything else during the build process. Next thing to do is how is this gonna clip onto our motherboard? It's gonna use these little clips onto the clips that are on the motherboard. Also coming off the CPU cooler, we've got a four pin fan connector, which we're gonna plug into our CPU fan header on the motherboard. And then we have a look over at the side of the CPU cooler. We have got some little sockets here. So if we pull this clip off, So we've got a four pin and also a three pin socket here. And this comes with two different cables. So we've got one, which is a standard 12 volt RGB cable, which is gonna plug into your 12 volt RGB header on your motherboard. And it has the four little sockets. So it's gonna plug into here. So that's it plugged in. If you want to control the RGB on this killer with the four pin header on your motherboard and use it with the motherboard software. So the other option that we have is there's also a USB cable supplied. And if we look at the end of it, it's got the three pins. So it's gonna plug in over this side here. On the other end of the cable, we've got a USB plug and we're gonna to need to plug this into one of the USB 2.0 headers on our motherboard. We're then gonna to have to download software, and I'll put links to that in the description, and then we can use that software to control the RGB lighting on the killer. So importantly, you don't want to use both of these, you want to use one or the other. Okay, so to install the killer, we want to lower it down and then line this little clip up with the socket here. Okay, so that side's locked in. Okay, so now all we need to do is line this little clip up on the other side. So we just put a little bit of pressure on it. And push in, so that's now locked into place. Okay, now to secure the cooler, all we're gonna to have to do is lift this lever all the way over to the other side. Okay, so that's now locked into place and the CPU cooler is nice and secure. In fact, we can actually lift it up with the cooler. Okay, so the next thing for us to do is to plug the cable, which is gonna allow the fan, the power to spin round, but also allow our motherboard to adjust the speed of the fan, depending on how hot the CPU is. So we're gonna plug it into the CPU fan header, which is this little four pin connector here, and it's marked here, CPU fan. Okay, if we look closely at the fan header, we'll notice there's a little bit of plastic um, over this side and the little connector here has two little bits of plastic on it as well. So these need to line up. So we line them up on this side and then just push and it should lock into place. Now the only other thing, we do wanna leave this cable here looking on tidily. So we're just gonna tuck it in out of the way and make things look a little bit more tidy. Okay, so at the moment, um, if we were to plug this in, our CPU cooler would work. It would have power and would, the motherboard would be able to control the speed of the fan, but we wouldn't have any way to control the RGB. And as we've mentioned, there's two ways of doing this. We can either use USB with a separate software, or we can use a 12 volt four pin RGB header on the motherboard and allow us to use our motherboard software to control the RGB. So I'll show you both of these. So if we're gonna use the USB one, first of all, we're gonna plug into the three pin connector on the bottom of the cutter. So we'll plug that in. Okay, so that's now secure and in place. So ideally with this cable, you would want to route it back around the motherboard, out of the way, and then we've got our USB headers, the 2.0 headers down the bottom of the motherboard. If we look at this pin, there's one hole missing here and there's one pin missing here. So we have to line it up the right way. And then all we need to do once it's lined up, is just a matter of pushing them. Ideally, like I said, this cable is gonna be coming out the back of the motherboard, coming round, 
and coming back in down the bottom so it's not going to run on the front of your motherboard. And I'll put a link in the description to the software that you're going to need to use this with if you are going to go down this route. Okay, so the other way that we can control lighting on the CPU killer is to use one of the 4-pin, 12-volt, non-addressable RGB headers on our motherboard. And our motherboard has two. So there is one here and one here. And this would be the method I would recommend if you're planning on using the stock CPU killer. And the reason for that is our motherboard has RGB on it. So we're going to have to download MSI's RGB software to allow us to control the lighting on the motherboard. It's also going to let us control the lighting on the RAM and let us control the lighting on the CPU killer as long as we plug it into one of these headers. So for me, it just makes sense to use the one RGB software rather than two different softwares. So like I say, if you're going to go down this route, this would be the method I would recommend. Okay, so before I come on to show you how to plug everything in, there's a couple of things I want to mention about RGB headers on motherboards. So there's two different types of RGB headers. The one we're going to use, as we've mentioned, is a 4-pin, 12-volt, non-addressable RGB header. This motherboard also has a different type of RGB header. There's 3-pin, addressable, 5-volt RGB headers as well. So we've got one here, and there's also another 3-pin one, I think. Yes, there it is, up the top of the motherboard. So these are not interchangeable. If you're hardware requires a 4-pin, 12-volt, non-addressable header, and you plug it into the addressable header, you're actually going to damage your hardware. So you have to be really, really careful here. So we're going to have to use one of the 4-pin headers, and they cannot be used interchangeably. Okay, so what we want to do is plug the cable into the bottom of the CPU cutter. And then we're going to need to plug the other end of the wire into one of the 4-pin headers on our motherboard. So as I've already mentioned to you, this cable is going to be routed around the back of the motherboard and back in once it's in the case. So we're going to use this 4-pin header here. Okay, so if I get you a close-up look at this cable, what you'll notice, this pin over the left-hand side has a little arrow on it. And that is to highlight the 12-volt pin. So it's important it's lined up with a 12-volt pin on the motherboard. If we have a look at the motherboard, what we will notice that our 12-volt pin is the one all the way over to the left-hand side. So if we line our cable up with that, then all we need to do is push, and it will lock into place. Okay, so that's the stock CPU cooler installed.